Sick of getting blisters? Stop slipping and just be comfortable with Pure Grip Socks Pro. Great fit, great comfort, lots of grip, and an even better price. Available now at puregripsocks.com. For the first time in a long time, the focus of the Adidas brand is not laceless football boots. And that also includes arguably the most hyped up line of boots heading into 2024 in the form of the new Predator, specifically the Adidas Predator 30 Elite Laceless. It bears a retail price of $270. And as you can see, instead of a lacing system or a big fold over flap tongue held down by an elastic strap, the central portion of the upper is just filled in with elasticated prime knit. And while compared to the normal laced Predator 30 Elite, it might seem like you're paying more for less, I think there's a solid argument to be made that the laceless version of the Predator 30 is the best one. And I realize that might sound crazy and don't get me wrong, I don't think this will be the best version of the Predator for everybody, but depending on what you're looking for, I think there is a lot to like about the Laceless Predator 30, which is exactly what I wanna talk about in today's video as we go over all the tech specs, take a look at how they fit and feel on feet, and perhaps most importantly, compare them to the other two top end models to help you decide which version would be best for you. And of course, if you're interested interested in any of the new Predator 30 models, you can pick them up below their normal retail prices by way of some exclusive SR4U coupon codes via the first link down below. And as always, if you guys enjoy these brutally honest reviews, don't forget to drop a like on the video and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you haven't already so you don't miss out on my reviews of all the latest football boots of 2024. To start things off, I think it's important to take a side-by-side -side look at the two regular variations of the Predator 30 because if you want the fold-over flap tongue, I don't think what I'm about to say in this video really matters to you. However, $260 for the lacing system, $270 if you opt for the laceless variation. So only 10 bucks when you're talking about nearly $300 football boots. I don't think that's a big deal, but you can see all of the striking elements are in the exact same spot. So there's no real benefit to the laceless model in that regard, unlike the previous generation Predator Accuracy. And you can see here across the top of the foot, you do have a little bit more kind of surface area that is free of any obstruction, where it just extends into more of that hybrid touch, where it would otherwise be cut off by the tongue and lacing area on the regular Predator 30. Beyond that though, there isn't a big difference between these two, at least on paper. So why go for the laceless model? Of course, it must be said, the negatives of all laceless football boots are still present when it comes to this new Predator 30 in that you don't have any adjustability. You don't have the ability to make them tighter. You don't have the ability to make them looser. Whatever tension you get from this elasticated prime knit material, as well as the predetermined shape of this football boot is how they are going to fit. Is there going to be some molding to your feet and stretch as you wear them in? Absolutely, but if it's not the right shape for your foot, there's really nothing about these that you can adjust to make them fit or feel better. Which is why in the case of just about every pair of laceless football boots, I think it's super important that when you try them on, you're honest with yourself because even if the fit is great, which I think it is on this Predator 30, if it's not the right shape for your foot, it's just not the right boot for you. With that in mind, as far as Adidas laceless football, boots go, I think the Copa series, even though they've never really been the most popular, have always had the best shaping to them. And I really feel like they've taken that and moved it into the Predator this time around, where obviously at the moment, when you're talking about the Copa Pure 2, they don't actually offer a laceless model, but I think it's pretty clear to see based on the silhouette of this new Predator 30, is this kind of takes over for Copa Pure Plus and Copa Sense Plus before it in terms of its overall shaping, where I honestly prefer the shape of these over the Adidas X in terms of just giving you that nice tight one-to-one -one wrap around your foot. I know the Predator is by no means classified as a pair of speed boots, but if you really want that kind of perfect wrap second skin feel, I think the shaping of this Predator 30 is some of the best we've ever seen from Adidas as far as their laceless boots go. The Hybrid Touch 2.0 synthetic upper strikes a really nice balance of structure as well as pliability, which is particularly important for a pair of lace 
faceless boots because without the structure, you lose out on lockdown and just the general connection to the football boot because you don't have a lacing system kind of holding your foot down and back inside the heel, just giving you that locked in sensation that especially you would expect from something that is in the high-end category. So this, I think, does a really good job of feeling structured while still being comfortable and obviously giving you somewhat of a leather-like touch, which is kind of the main goal of Hybrid Touch 2.0 in the first place. As for the laceless system, it is like so many Adidas laceless boots, just made from an elasticated prime knit material, quite thin, really simple on the outside, nothing on the underside. What you see is what you get. However, it's a very tight weave with really good tension to it. And there's actually a very small area that has the ability to stretch. This means two things. Number one, putting these on is more difficult than some of the other laceless football boots that Adidas has put out, which you could view as a negative. However, once they are actually on your feet, because most of the upper doesn't have the ability to stretch and has such a nice predetermined shape to it, they end up feeling like a second skin. They wrap your foot really, really well. And from a lockdown perspective, I would say they are way above average compared to not just other laceless boots currently available, but just compared to any laceless boot that has ever existed. But perhaps even more importantly, while the lockdown is great, what can often happen when you just have a more structured, predetermined shape to the upper is that the comfort kind of goes out the window. But that is not the case with the Predator 30 Elite Lace in my experience. It fits really comfortably all the way through, although I would make the argument that the lace variations, just because they allow for a little bit more expansion, do fit more comfortably. And certainly if you want a little bit more of that classic Predator feel, you'd be much better off going for a version with a lacing system. However, if you're looking for the features of a Predator and an overall profile that feels a lot more slim and speed boot-esque, I think you're really going to like what the laceless variation has on offer because again you are still getting those strike skin rubber elements scattered across the striking area of the foot providing tons and tons of extra grip on the ball that is particularly noticeable and pleasant when shooting everything else about these is pretty much the same as the other two laced high-end variations it's still a low cut design with a little bit of an extended tail you have this really soft kind of microfiber heel liner with minimal amounts of kind of targeted padding but in general it's the perfect amount in terms of just giving you a nice amount of lockdown while still feeling comfortable. There's a little bit of some texturing in the form of these kind of dots that are scattered throughout, something that is not unfamiliar to past Adidas boots. They've done this before. It feels quite good. Then the insole fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. And it is, again, pretty standard in terms of giving you this mesh liner on the surface, a little bit of texture from this graphic, and it's made from a single layer of white foam. As a base, the laceless Predator 30 Elite does maintain the same control frame 2.0 design where you do have that external heel counter attached directly to the sole plate, stiffener bars through the middle, very straightforward and honestly more along the lines of kind of the OG sprint frame that was originally introduced on the F50 Adi Zero series and that we also got on Adi Power as well as Predator LZ to some extent. So again, this feels a little bit more speed boot-esque than what we've been getting on the Predator series, but still very solid underfoot, which I quite appreciate. And then as far as the stud pattern is concerned, you get these three-sided triangular studs. Again, very old school in terms of being F50 Adi Zero-esque, but more or less the same layout that we've been getting from the Adidas brand for quite some time. Good length to the studs, very aggressive in terms of the bite that they provide. Obviously, a lot of people really miss the bladed tier X layouts that used to be synonymous with the Predator series, although they were also used on other Adidas models. However, what they have here, I think, ultimately does perform really well. And overall, the sole plate and stud pattern does feel like a major improvement over past Predator models, recent past Predator models. When it comes to weight, if you're comparing the laced and laceless versions of the Predator 30 Elite, I think most people would anticipate the laceless model weighing less because of its overall more simple design, given the similarities between these two. But let's find out in real time using a scale, both in the same size, 9.5 US. We'll start off with the laced variation and you can see that they weigh in 
at 7.7 .7 ounces, the equivalent of 219 grams. So a lot lighter than the Predator accuracy it replaces, and in general, on par with most top end football boots. Then we have the laceless model, which you can see weighs in at 7.1 ounces, the equivalent of 202 grams, which is actually a lot more than I was personally expecting when it came to comparing these two football boots. These fall into the same weight range, if not lighter than some of the more popular speed boots currently on the market. And in general, kind of as I've been talking about throughout this video, it just has a little bit more of a speed boot vibe about it. And just to put how light these are into perspective, if we compare it to the current Crazy Fast Point 1, you can see that they're only within a couple grams. These are only five grams lighter and technically the brand's current flagship speed boot minus the plus model of course now like I did mention earlier because this doesn't have a lot of stretch to it putting them on is not the easiest so I'm going to show you what that looks like without grip socks because I think that's what most people are probably going to be wearing these with however if you have extra grip on the heel or the bottom it's just going to make putting them on a little bit more difficult. However, with laceless boots in particular, I do think it can be beneficial just to help cut down on any kind of movement inside of the football boot, because again, you are missing out on some level of lockdown with a stretchy section across the top of the foot. Nonetheless, with all laceless boots, I think it's always easier to be seated. I'm doing it on one knee right now. Get your foot in and then kind of just stretch it on the sides a little bit and then try to use your thumb kind of as a shoehorn to just slide it in. So you can see I've done it a few times. It's not super difficult, but you will find that it kind of bunches up here at the front. So you have to fix it a little bit, but once they're on, they feel really secure. Once you do get them on, however, the Laceless Predator 30 Elite definitely has a distinctively different fit and feel compared to the laced variations. And that is simply down to the fact that because of the laceless system, the overall shaping and volume, particularly across the top of the midfoot, is just tighter than what you'll find from the laced variations. In turn, giving this a little bit more of a speed boot-esque wrap around your foot in that they're just a little bit slimmer and a little bit lower volume. Is the lockdown as good? Arguably yes, arguably no. I think that's very much going to depend on the specific shape of your feet, but I would argue that with a lacing system, you can just tie the laces a little bit tighter and get better lockdown than what these have on offer, even though they have a little bit of a lower volume, slimmer shape to them. But again, if you like that kind of speed boot-esque feel, you're getting a surprising amount of that from this laceless variation. In terms of overall width, you definitely have decent width pretty much all the way through. I would say, again, the midfoot is maybe a little bit lacking in volume. So for somebody that has a really high arch, definitely the laceless variation might give you a bit of trouble in terms of how it fits your foot. But again, as with any laceless boot, you kind of have to try them on to see how they're going to fit you specifically. The heel lockdown, all things considered, is quite good. And as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US. And just like the laced variations of the Predator 30, I would definitely recommend going true to size if you are looking to get the best possible fit. The biggest compliment I can give them is that for a pair of laceless football boots, the fit feels very uncompromised. So in conclusion, am I picking the laceless version of the Predator 30 Elite over either the regular Elite or the FT variation? Absolutely not. I just prefer the adjustability and slightly more, I don't want to say relaxed fit, but customizable fit that you get with the lacing system on the other two versions. However, that is very much a matter of personal preferences. And I do think that when we're talking about what the Laceless Predator 30 Elite is as an overall pair of football boots, especially if you're a fan of the laceless thing, this is hands down the best laceless boot on the market. It does everything you could possibly want from a performance standpoint in terms of lockdown, responsiveness, comfort, quality of fit, with the addition of that extra grip on the upper that I think makes these particularly unique. They're as light as the speed boot alternative in the Crazy Fast Point 1 laceless. And overall, at $270, they're obviously not cheap, 
but you could spend significantly more and get something that is arguably nowhere near as good. If you like the fit and feel of a speed boot, but also like the idea of the additional control power and accuracy that comes along with the features of a classic Adidas Predator model, this is one of the most interesting hybrids ever to come out.